I'm delighted to join the symposium on sustainability and the Anthropocene. This particular session, uh, which I'm honored to chair, is on climate crises, biodiversity loss, and human contacts, needed actions for a habitable Earth. We have lined up excellent speakers to cover this topic of you know, major interest to all of us. I'd like to share some brief remarks with you, especially focusing on the needed actions for a habitable Earth. I'll begin my remarks with talking about uh, the academician Paul Crutzen, who passed away in early 2021. He was a very close friend of mine. We collaborated for nearly 40 years after he moved to Germany. He used to visit my lab every year for, for almost one to two months. During 2000 to 2001, when he initiated the Anthropocene idea, he talked nonstop with me about Anthropocene. In my view, he was a, a, a creative a genius and a remarkable friend of mine. We can let geologists argue about the legitimacy of naming the current period as Anthropocene or the argument about when it all started. But it's clear that humans dominate the environment, particularly the atmosphere and the climate. To give just but one example, since 1850 to now, we have dumped close to two and a half trillion tons of carbon dioxide to the uh, air. And about 1.2 trillion tons, roughly half of that is still overhead, trapping the planet's heat. We will get a vivid demonstration of this dominating human interference in about six years, give or take few years, when the warming exceeds one and a half degrees Celsius. I had predicted this in 2016 in a meeting of the Academy when most scientists, including the United Nations, were predicting that it won't happen till uh, mid 2040s. So when it does cross the one and a half degree threshold, the planet will be warmer than any climate it has experienced in the last 200,000 years. Just for a reference, the planet crossed or came close to one and a half degrees in the year 2023. But what I'm talking about is long-term steady warming. So what can we expect? Let me just give two scenarios. At the worst, lot worsening of the weather extremes, both in duration and intensity. We'll witness all this just five, six years from now. At best, I'm hoping there will be near unanimous public support for solving the crisis. Okay? Just like the Antarctic uh, ozone hole, appearance of it triggered the Montreal Protocol to face our chlorofluorocarbons. So what do I mean by solving the crisis? We at the Pontifical Academy of Science and Social Science have come up with a new approach for resolving the climate crises. We refer to this approach as MAST, M for mitigation to reduce the climate risks, adaptation to adapt to unavoidable risks, and societal transformation to survive the crises and thrive during it and emerge as a sustainable uh, planet. The two academies held a summit just this year and invited mayors and governors from around the world and we released a call to action for climate resilience statement signed by Pope Francis and all the attending governors and mayors. We are now in the process of implementing the recommendations from the call to action through a series of regional summits 
both in the global south and north, on climate resilience. As you know, resilience has to be done at the local scale, at the level of a community, a city, a state, and then a nation. Our hope is this initiative by the two pontifical academies will trigger a global movement towards a climate resilience for all people and all ecosystems. Thank you very much.